Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna from Hasnat Not Me and now we're going to continue the discussion of appendix if you haven't watched that video yet i highly recommend you to go ahead and watch first my uh, basic anatomy of the appendix its positions etc only then you can understand this topic oh quite well all right to all those who haven't subscribed i make anatomy a piece of cake so guys do not forget to subscribe to my channel Let's begin with appendicitis, a very, very common presentation, especially in young individuals like adolescents uh, in the teenage age, uh, mostly people present with this condition. So what is appendicitis? Always remember when there is the suffix of itis, it means inflammation. And what does inflammation even mean? So the inflammation is basically your body's response to an infection. So inflammation is not the infection itself. When there is going to be infection, your body will fight against it. And this fighting against an infection is known as the inflammation. Now that you know the definition of inflammation, you will understand this better. So basically what's happening in the appendicitis is it is getting inflamed. And inflammation has signs like swelling and pain. Let's talk about the factors that produce appendicitis in the first place. What is in the appendix that causes it to be inflamed so commonly? There are three factors that I'm going to mention here that I've talked about in my previous video. The first factor is the fact that the appendicitis has this very narrow lumen. All right, this narrow lumen results in what you call a fecolith. The fecolith is basically uh, the feces matter usually from the center gets very hardened, right? So if the lumen is very narrow, this hardening can cause the obstruction of the lumen. And when a lumen is obstructed, all the secretions of the appendix, now where do they go? Since they're going to stay within the appendix, always remember any site of stasis in your body is what leads to your infection resulting in inflammation. This is the first factor contributing to appendicitis. The second part is that the appendix consists of so many lymphatic follicles. Basically, the uh, appendix histologically, if you view it, it has many, many aggregates of lymphatic follicles, right? So the lymphatic follicles undergo hyperplasia. So if this is the wall appendix, if there's so many lymphatic follicles, lymphatic follicles, lymphatic follicles. Now, if they undergo hyperplasia because some infection is over here, so they'll avoid or lymphatic follicles basically fight off infection. So if there's even a single uh, infection, these will undergo hyperplasia, they'll become bigger. And when these enlarge, they can cause obstruction of the lumen of the appendix and similarly leading to appendicitis. And finally, the contributing factor is the fact that the appendicular artery is an end artery. If the appendix is being supplied by your uh, appendicular artery, and if there is, let's for instance, there is infection here, if this artery undergoes any kind of disruption, obstruction, there is no way to compensate for this artery because an end artery means there is no other way blood can come here. There is no anastomosis going on to give bypass routes to supply appendix with blood, right? So whenever there's compromised blood supply, what happens? There is even more increase of infection. There is ischemia, means oxygen is not reaching the area. And when there is cutting off of blood supply, what happens? necrosis of that organ so this can lead to rupture of your appendix and the inflammation infection can spread all around these are the factors contributing to appendicitis now let's talk about the appendicitis itself how will the patient present to you with appendicitis so the symptoms in a patient with appendicitis the first one is that obviously there will be pain the question of pain and a very important examination question is, where is the pain going to be? We've talked about the feature of appendix being supplied by the T10 segment of the spinal cord, uh, where the sympathetic, sympathetic fibers are going to come from the T10. So this is a T10 segment, let's suppose the sympathetic fibers are going through this segment. We also remember the T10 segment was responsible for supplying what area? The umbilicus, the skin around the umbilicus was at the T10 segment and it was being supplied by that segment. So if the afferent somatic fibers that carry pain from the umbilicus enter the same nerve root as the sympathetic fibers of the appendix, what do you think will happen? 
we all know that the viscera is unable to detect pain there is one way we can feel the pain of appendicitis and that is if the, somehow the somatic fibers are stimulated so due to this t10 segment since having the same root if this is undergoing any kind of pain this pain will be referred to the umbilicus and umbilicus has somatic fibers which is why the pain of appendicitis will first be felt at the umbilicus point or periumbilical region nowhere else so remember this that the pain of appendicitis occurs at the umbilicus not on the position of appendicitis this is a very important concept and i want you all to remember this especially the concept of referred pain see the viscera are unable to detect pain we've already talked about that but somatic fibers can detect pain so the skin around the umbilicus is going to feel pain if there is a appendicitis so the initial symptoms of these people suffering from appendicitis will be umbilical pain what happens next this pain reaches the iliac right iliac fossa if you are not going to fix the appendix there and then how does it reach the iliac fossa simple big when the appendix undergoes appendicitis and when the appendicitis get, starts to worsen it affects the organs around it more specifically the parietal peritoneum surrounding it and now we all know the parietal peritoneum is pain sensitive so if there is pain in the right iliac fossa after the umbilicus this means your peritonitis has occurred regional peritonitis that your peri parietal peritoneum is being involved therefore the pain is in the right iliac fossa here students usually make the mistake of saying that the pain of appendix is felt in the right iliac fossa because obviously it lies there no the pain of appendix is felt in the umbilicus but the pain due to appendix causing involvement of peritoneum is felt in the right iliac fossa so the sequence of pain is that first it's in the umbilicus second is in right iliac fossa and when it's coming in the right iliac fossa it's sign of danger you need to carry out quick action in the form of appendectomy all right so then they'll experience pain in the right iliac fossa next other symptoms that the patient will experience vomiting nausea and all those symptoms right next let's talk about the signs you will observe in the appendicitis which means as from the doctor point of view what examination will you carry out and what you will observe the first important thing you'll observe is tenderness what is tenderness pain on palpating an area of your body is called tenderness the tenderness is felt at the mcburney's point and we've discussed the mcburney's point in our previous video The McBurney's point is a point lying midway between the right anterior superior iliac spine and the umbilicus. You draw a line. The junction of the medial two thirds and the lateral one third. That point right there is called the McBurney's point. If, as a doctor, you if you are suspecting appendicitis and you palpate this or you uh, put pressure over this point, the person might scream. That means he felt pain. This is called the tenderness. the second sign you'll feel is when you remove your hand uh, the removing of the your palpatory pressure will cause pain once again this is known as the rebound tenderness this is another sign you'll observe in this patient all right and then you have the third sign which is related to the positions of the appendix so if the appendix is a retrocecal the patient will tell you that when he flexes his thigh the pain gets better and when you make the patient lie down and you extend his thigh or his hip joint the patient will scream of pain and why is that because the retrocecal appendix is the most common the retrocecal appendix is lying directly on your lower back muscle which is lying on the posterior abdominal wall this is the psoas major muscle so when you are going to extend the thigh the psoas major will contract and causing pain in in the person's lower back so that is a sign that the appendix is retrocecal in position all right the second sign you can perform is related to the pelvic position of the appendix if you flex the thigh of the patient and medially rotate it the obturator internus is stretched it causes pain to the patient so these are the two position related signs that you will uh, see in a patient and you know you can detect where the appendix might be lying
So what is the treatment for appendix is that you'll carry out an operation called the appendectomy. Now you can uh, carry out an appendectomy via a large incision. Usually you use surgeons use for appendectomy a gridiron incision. It is a horizontal incision centered at the McBurney's point. This is basically where the base of the appendix lies, right? Either they can do that, either they can carry out a laparoscopic appendectomy, which means passage of cameras within your um, abdomen. Uh, the f um, benefit of a laparoscopic appendectomy is that only you need to make small holes like incision, not like not more than two centimeter uh, incisions, right? So that was all about the appendicitis. But before I end this video, I want to talk about a very important differential diagnosis that comes in the appendicitis. If a person is experiencing pain of appendicitis, there is one more thing we, ca we can think about. This important clinical is known as the Michel's diverticulitis quickly talk about that basically Michel's diverticulum is a persistent piece of the proximal part of the vitellointestinal duct so there was this vitellointestinal duct in uh, as an embryo uh, you had this duct what happens is in two percent people the proximal part it persists all right this basically lies about uh, 30 to 60 centimeter uh, proximal to the ileocecal junction on the ileum. So in 2% individual, this remains. So what happens when this remains? This, this Michel's diverticulum can undergo infection leading to its inflammation known as the Michel's diverticulitis. It can even undergo rupture. The symptoms of this disease can mimic appendicitis. So you might suspect appendicitis, but when you go inside and you realize the appendix is completely normal, like this was the major cause of it. So a very important feature of the Michel's diverticulum is that it occurs in 2% of uh, population. It is about two inches in size. It is set, uh, situated two feet proximal to the ileocecal junction. So this is a 2-2 rule of the Michel's diverticulitis. So that was all for today's uh, clinicals, appendicitis, and everything you needed to know for the appendix topic. I really hope you understood the video well. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.